Welcome this evening to our April 8th, 2014 council meeting. Uh, if you would please stand with me for the Pledge of Allegiance and remain standing for an invocation. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for the ability to meet, discuss topics that are important to our community. Please be with us as we discuss things as a community. Give us your guidance and patience. Bless us for this meeting and for days to come. In your name we pray. Amen. Call this meeting to order. Certificate of clerk first. Following certificate of the clerk of the council to the presiding office, officer of the council of the municipality of West Milton was read. The undersigned certified that all requirements to notice and notification has been done or attempted to be done in compliance with council rule three, dated April 8, 2014. Clerk of council, Linda Cantrell. Roll call. Here. Francis? Here. Willis? Here. Ogle? Here. Ashley? Here. Miller? Here. And Mayor Cove is absent. Uh, is there a need to excuse any council members? I don't. Mm -hmm. For previous meetings, no? Okay. For tonight's meeting? Make a motion to excuse Mayor Cove from tonight's meeting. Second. Roll call, please. Francis? Yes. Miller, or excuse me, Willis. <laughs> yes. Tennerman. Yes. Fogel. Yes. Ashley. Yes. And Miller. Yes. Okay. In your packet, you should have received minutes from the council meeting on March 11th. Do I have a motion to accept those as written? So, so moved. second. That's fast. Roll call, please. <laughs> got business to do. Francis? Yes. Willis? Yes. Tennerman? Yes. Fogel? Yes. Ashley? Yes. And Miller? Yes. Okay. Uh, you should have also received minutes to your council workshop meeting for March 25th. Is there a motion to accept those? So moved. Second. Roll call, please. <laughs> Francis? Yes. Willis? Yes. Tennerman? Yes. Fogel? Yes. Ashley? Yes. And Miller? Yes. And you should have also received minutes for the special workshop. Do we need to adopt those? Those were part that of. Was part that of. was part of. Sorry. Okay. I have a presentation from Miami County Solid Waste and Recycling. Cindy? Thank you. 
just to remind you that um, those events are going on and we are planning your electrons because I can drop off special instance. I'll have more information on that coming up. We're doing that again with Goodwill, Easter Seals, with Mining Valley. Um, so that's just it. In a nutshell, I just wanted to give you an update that I still don't know anything on how to go back into. Um, does anybody have any questions? On the Shred Fest, will the items that residents take in be shredded then while they wait so that they are guaranteed a nominated? I can't say the words. I know what you mean. Yeah. Um, yeah. They can wait and stay here and they can watch the items being shredded, but um, Angie Shred, the company that's doing that, is licensed and bonded. And um, if a person can't wait, they can get shredded. Because that was asked to me the last time they did one. I know Angie's family, so okay. I, I trust the sister. Their, her grandfather's from here in West Milton. Okay. Okay. That's all I have. Yeah. Anything else? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Those were in the Val Pack. Correct. Okay. Mr. Klein, are there any correspondence to council tonight? There's no correspondence, uh, Mr. Vice Mayor, but uh, we are um, happy to introduce Assistant Miami County Prosecutor, Mrs. Uh, Janine Pratt, who'd like to introduce herself to council. Hello, I'm Janine Pratt, as Mr. Klein mentioned. I am running for common police court judge on the Republican primary, and I've been getting around to all the county areas and introducing myself, meeting the citizens, um, going door to door already. Um, I typically spend some time in uh, West Milton because my son plays on the uh, Miami West soccer team. Uh, and uh, we spent a great deal at Lowry Park in the spring and the fall. So it's been a great experience for us. Um, I've been a county prosecutor for 17 years. I've been a practicing attorney for 20. Um, I work with Tony Kendall and Barry Nasal for that period of time. I'm in the courtroom every day representing all of you. Um, I'm a litigator. I enjoy that. I know how the court works. And um, I have many, many trials and cases uh, per year. Um, and I really like that experience. And I, and I handle special docket cases. I handle uh, child abuse and neglect cases. I represent probably the most vulnerable members of our community, our children, and from uh, abuses and neglect, as I mentioned. And when they don't have a voice, I try to be their voice. I just wanted to introduce myself to you and tell you that I'll you'll see, probably see me around. Um, I've been introduced by some of your citizens. Uh, Ann Huffman's a good friend of mine, and so has uh, Jose Lopez been uh, good as far as uh, showing me around and meeting all of you. So I appreciate this opportunity and look forward to seeing you in the future. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, we'll move on to comments from citizens and not specifically for tonight's legislation. So, if you'd like to. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Vice Mayor, Chairman, and Council, and City Manager. My name is David Snyder. I'm from South Bend, Indiana, and I represent Falling Waters LLC. And what we do, or what your mission is, is reintegrating North American dams back into the electrical grid system of America. And that brings us to West Milton. West Milton owns a spectacular dam on the Stillwater River. From this dam, we can generate, we believe, up to two megawatts per hour of power. That is enough for about 2,000 homes. And this is just from an existing dam and mill race and tail race that's already in place. Um, the federal government in August of last year took a step forward for small hydro. The Stillwater project would be small hydro. It's five megawatts per hour or less. And with this bill, House Bill 267, it passed the House of Representatives by unanimous vote passed the U.S. Senate by unanimous vote, and the President of the United States signed it. Our country wants more hydropower, especially the small hydropower. 
So being that you have this facility in place, this is a responsibility that has fallen to your shoulders to decide whether or not to participate with the United States in providing this much needed green energy. It's the opportunity of a lifetime. But by preserving this dam, not only for hydropower, you're preserving an asset for the community. People come here to fish, people come here to picnic, people come here to canoe and boat on the river. Now I've heard from Mr. Kogan who says he wants to take it out so he can paddle his kayak uninterrupted. Frankly, I think it's better if Mr. Kogan and his ilk get out of their kayak, come uptown, and have lunch, and get back in the kayak after the portage and go on down river. That's my opinion. Um, I think it's very important in this day and age when you read about Duke Energy in North Carolina. I don't know if you've heard about that. They burn coal. Coal is very much large quantity of fuel in the United States. The problem with it is no matter what you do, it's dirty. If you burn it without cleaning the stack, you pollute the air. It goes up north to our neighbors. If you scrub it, you take all the stuff you use to clean it and you put it into lagoons. And this is what happened to Duke Energy. Lagoons were clay lined, but evidently not to spec, because one broke. This water has now gone out in the North Carolina's rivers and streams and polluted for miles, over 70 miles so far. We need to put our shoulders together and work together to provide green energy so we can quit burning coal, so we can quit burning natural gas, so we can quit burning fuel oil. We have water. The Midwest has more water than anywhere else other than New England. And the amount of small dams in Ohio is astounding. There are so many that once we get a foothold here, I think that we can make the state of Ohio a net exporter of green energy. And it can start right here. But in starting here, you're also going to bring more tourism to your city. Because this will be the second installation of this type of turbine in the United States, in all of North America. We'll be doing the first one in the city of Goshen, which is the county seat of Elkhart, Indiana. The lease is signed. Uh, we work with Mark Brinson there, who's the director of development. And it was about a year, year and a half process. The lease has been signed now for two months. We are placing our order for the turbines coming from France. It's a BLH turbine. What that turbine is, it's a new invention of about five years that, believe it or not, was tested at De Laval University in Quebec City, Quebec. And it's fish friendly. The fish can swim through it without harm. Now, there was a fish report done on the Stillwater River when it came to take this dam out. I don't know if y'all have a copy of it. If you don't, let me know and I'll forward a copy to you. They found that the dam has not affected the fish on the Stillwater River. Other than on the upstream side, in the mill pond, the fish are healthier, the fish are fatter, and everybody from Mount Pleasant who's in the fishing club wants to fish there when they draw the lots. Because you get to fish just upstream of the dam, you win the fishing contest, they guarantee you. But another little aside about the fish, I didn't notice till today, there's somebody who started raising trout along the river, just upstream from the dam. <laughs> the problem was, he put it in the river's floodplain. But this thing was all stocked with trout to bring in people to go fishing there for trout. But the river came in and the fish went out. Last week, somebody caught an 18-inch rainbow trout. 
Now, when that word gets out, fly fishermen for trout are going to come in. But without the dam, without the dam, the trout can't survive. Trout need cold water. Stillwater River, in most places, is rather shallow. Behind the dam, it's deep enough that they will survive. And this will bring in fishermen. I'm a fly fisherman myself. Any place that's close by, I go for it. Trout especially. But up where I'm at in Indiana and Michigan is steelhead salmon. That's, that is fun. So the fish question is resolved as far as I can see. The Ohio DNR said there's not much of an impact other than they're healthier on the upside of the dam. You have trout living. You even have walleye all things. That is a cold water fish and very tasty. So there's no fish problem. The last thing I saw from Mr. Kogan in the reports I was reading with the ACOE, Army Corps of Engineers, is now there's a problem with the macro and vertebrae in the river. Do you know what macro and vertebrae are? Crawl ends, snails. Now that dam was built in about 1840. I have to believe they've adapted. What do you think? You think they've adapted? I know they have. As have the fish. As have the river otter, who probably like it because it's a deep pool to go fishing in. I don't know if you have river otter there yet. So let's talk about the avian species. That pond is feeding two pairs of nesting bald eagles. Dams do that because they create a mill pond, which is what you have right now with that dam. Further evidence, if you want to look it up, there's the St. Clair Lake in the St. Clair River outside Detroit. There's a hydropower dam there. It keeps the water thawed out and so that birds can fish there. They have 150 bald eagles wintering over at that hydropower dam. It just, I couldn't believe my read. So, you also have, believe it or not, a pair of osprey feeding off your mill pond. I have not seen the osprey. I have seen the eagles. And I've been told you also have a pair of green falcon pair feeding off them. I have not seen the falcon. I cannot say firsthand. So, your dam is supporting your fish. Your dam's interrupting your crawdads. Your dam's supporting your avian species. And it's also supporting your wildlife in the winter so they can get a drink. Deer, turkey, coyotes, fox, whatever. These are all very important. Getting back to making hydropower at the dam, though, we make hydropower there, and people come here to see it, and West Milton, Ohio, starts getting all this tension about being progressive with green energy. Manufacturing employers like to see that. They want to go to areas that are progressive. They want to go to areas that are walkable communities. You already have that. You're downtown Main Street. It's beautiful. Your architecture is incredible. Such a blast from the past. You throw in this dam, you throw in the hydropower. People come to see that. People who recruit businesses come to see that. What do you guys have? You got something very unique. Now, when we build the powerhouse, we want to build it in the proximate location of the prior powerhouse that was there, for which we have a picture. By the way, the original dam was called the Copic. C-O-P-P-O-C-K, and it was a mill dam. They sold it out to, it's been so long since I've read this, it was a trolley car company that came from Dayton, Ohio, and went to pick one. It stopped in West Milton, actually had a trolley shed here. I think it's still standing, it's been converted. And they used the power from the dam to augment the power coming from Dayton and went on up Ludlow Falls, Covington, pick one, and back. This was so the people in Dayton could escape the summer heat in the city. 
this is the type of thing that can be done again. I say you do the trolley, but you draw the people up here for fishing, recreation, sport in this mill pond. In this natural nature, come and see our bald eagles. So we're going to augment this further at our powerhouse. Our plans are to build a glass, three-sided three glass cubicle on the back of our equipment. So students and people can walk into this glass cubicle and see the river and the glass wall behind which we will have all of our electronic gear as taking in this power from your Stillwater River and dam. This in itself is an educational opportunity that most children will never receive, but which you as a town can offer. Tourism again will come to see this. People will come to fish here, especially the regular trout. I mean, that's a dead giveaway. So that brings me back to where I really wanted to start. Back in 2012, we made an offer to the prior council to purchase your dam. Because at that time, we knew we could generate approximately two megawatts of power. Since that time, as I said, House Bill 267 passed, along with the Companion Bill, House Bill 657, I believe, which is for conduit hydropower. Now we have the nation behind us. We also have the Ohio DNR ready to help us with repairs to the dam. The dam is solid. The dam is damn solid. It needs to be plastered. And that is about it. The spillway, the mill race, the tail race, they need to be excavated, cleaned up, and reconfigured. When this is done, your mosquito problem will also be somewhat more in abeyance because water will be flowing through these dead areas versus having stacked rock cabins, which are big blocks, silly blocks, a riprap and galvanized fence cages stacked on your steep banks. And just riprap on your lower banks so they don't erode. This is what Mr. Kogan told the prior council, and I heard him say that's how they're going to do it. Now, also, if you're aware of the Inglewood Dam downriver they tore out, which they should never have done, they didn't restore the banks at all. Now they're cluttered with invasive plants that nobody can control. Now if you'll check your contract with ORF, you will find that Mr. Cogan has committed to doing approximately 800 feet upriver. Your impoundment goes over three miles. And who's going to take care of that first 800 feet? while the native plants regenerate. Somebody's got water, somebody's got to maintain it. It doesn't happen by itself. Another flaw that's in your contract with the Ohio River Foundation, which I don't think any of you are aware of, if there's a shortfall, if his money is not big enough, the city of West Milton is liable for any overages. Any overages. So, you have here an attorney turned lobbyist <coughs> who's all of a sudden handling millions of dollars and he's going to control your financial destiny. Now, if he makes a mistake, the Ohio River Foundation is not liable. The city of West Milton is you will write the check and the contractor presents it. That's a very, very unilateral contract. And I recommend that you have your law department review that and advise you what to do. But by submitting an offer to this council in 2012, we removed all those worries from the city of West Milton. We will purchase it. Take it off your hands. You will no longer have any responsibility 
whatsoever for that dam because Falling Waters LLC will own the dam. It doesn't belong to us though. Somebody calls up and says, I have a dam problem. You say, call Falling Waters. Here's their number. We don't own it. That to me is the smartest thing to do. You've taken off the risk. You've marched in the Green Energy Parade. You've increased your tourism. You've increased your chance for attracting businesses. And you've increased your money into your account. Because we're all paying for it. You're not going to pay us like you might with the Ohio River Foundation. We're going to pay you. Or if you like, we'll trade in kind. If you want some playground equipment or something like that, fine. But we're also giving you a classroom on the river. We are giving you a glass classroom for the kids and tourists. Tourists, they spend money to look at the hydropower equipment, to look at your beautiful river, to try and spot the eagles, the osprey, and the falcon. It's a win-win. I just, I get excited to think about it. I wish y'all would too. I mean, it's, it's prosperity. And on top of this, here's the biggest thing. If we do that much hydropower, our investment's going to be seven million plus dollars. Now y'all may say, where are you gonna get that kind of money? <laughs> Uncle Sam wants green energy. USDA Rural Development guarantees 80% of the loan. A private bank makes the loan. USDA guarantees 80% of that money. Now on top of that, there's grants out there. We get grants. On top of that, we develop renewable energy credits called RECs. We sell those to people like EP&L. You may ask the question, wait a minute, there's a no-compete clause in the contract from DPNL when they gave it to us that we can't generate there. That's not your problem. I'm buying it. The DPNL is going to come to me and they're going to say, uh, can we buy your Rex? We want your green energy. What can we do to help you? I guarantee you. You'll probably read about the paper. DPNL is a coal burner. Coal burners have problems like Duke Energy, like Muskingum Valley does, with their mile high smokestack down there in the valley. Terrible. So, once again, better fishing, rainbow trout now, tourism, business growth, education for the children, no responsibility for the town of West Middle. None. You sell it, we buy it, you're out of the loop. It's over. No more. It's not your baby. You're not going to have to make up any shortcomings from the Ohio River Foundation because he doesn't want to get out of his kayak here. You're going to get money. You're going to have more money to manage for your citizens to build better improvements. And you're going to draw business in with us. And you're going to maintain this wonderful avian facility. I had no idea until I came here. Unbelievable. Totally unbelievable. And rainbow trout now? What a gift. You guys are the luckiest guys I've ever met. There's no doubt about it. And I thank you for your time. Thank you. But before we have any other speakers, does anyone from council have any questions for Mr. Snyder? I have yes. one. Are you the only uh, type of organization like this uh, in this area that is trying to save the dams, uh, like the, the low head dams? Because this isn't just the, the only area like this. And you mentioned Goshen, Indiana is the only one in North America. So are there other outfits well, that are doing this be, too? or? Uh, they will be the first one with the VLH turbine. What is happening is in some of these old powerhouses, people are going in and repairing these old generators. 
we found that's just not feasible. Uh, right now, we're looking at one in Paul Paul, Michigan. It's got a 250 kilowatt generator from GE, Schenectady, New York. And uh, we can put two 500 kilowatt, tur tur kilowatt turbines in there, super exceeding what they have. So doing exactly what we're doing, there is a group in uh, Oregon who's trying to launch, but they're not too far along yet. I can, I can build on, on, on that there. Okay. All right. And I'm, I'm going to be brief. <laughs> Um, because uh, we don't want to take uh, too, too much of your time. Hi, my name is Mark Bamberger. I'm uh, the legal counsel for um, the Sabre Dam, Dam Group. Um, um, they could have gotten anybody uh, to represent uh, the legal issues. Uh, they, 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 they found me because before I went in, in the law, I was um, an um, environmental geologist with um, a PhD in, uh, in, in that field. And I headed uh, uh, the groundwater program at uh, the Miami Conservancy District for for some um, some time as well. Um, just to amplify a couple quickly um, environmental issues and talk about a couple of on the legal con concerns, we could we could come back at. Uh, um, a workshop, if um, that would be helpful, and sort of to talk about some uh, of uh, details here. But um, I've um, I worked for uh, a couple different EPAs, and um, being in the environmental issues business for a while, uh, it was an environmental axiom that uh, um, dams are bad. That all dams are are bad that the best thing that you can do for, for the environment is to take the system back to uh, the natural balance that, that, it, that it was in. And to a significant um, degree, that is, that is correct. Um, dams can do um, environmental harm. They can obviously alter um, natural condition. But you have to ask yourself, a dam that has been here since 1840, what is uh, the natural condition? Dave has gone into, and I'm certainly not going to go back over, um, the abundant uh, ecosystem that has been built here. Um, um, the Miami Conservancy District, of course, as you know, owns um, the Anglewood Dam. Um, on the low dam that was t taken out and um, uh, the passive dam that is part of uh, uh, the network that was built after um, the Dayton flood. Um, there has been significant um, environmental damage done in the Englewood area once that dam was taken out. It will take generations before what is considered a healthy ecosystem is is built you now have that um, talk, talking about the the fishing uh, the tourism um, um, still water is um, a beautiful uh, river in parts but it's um, definitely doesn't have the uh, reputation uh, on the great might on the Great Miami and such, except in this area. Uh, the water quality here is excellent. That's why we are getting trout. That's why we are getting the abundance of um, ecosystem that, that, that you have. So um, the environmental attitude of dams being bad, I would say, does not hold here. And uh, I've worked with the um, Ohio Rivers Foundation. Um, um, before I went um, into uh, to law, they've done some excellent work. In this case, uh, I think a very solid case can be made that they would be doing damage to, to, to the environment, to what brings people to the West Milton area. Yes, yes we represent um, um, the residents that are um, at the river. But as I know, council has heard, there are almost a thousand 
signatories to um, the Save the Dam um, efforts. Um, the legal issues, um, the liability. Right now, of course, there is um, a liability issue. Um, your attorney can, I'm sure, has uh, educated you um, about that. If, um, if you get rid of the dam, yes, that would be gone. But again, you wouldn't have the opportunity to produce the energy, you wouldn't have the educational opportunity, the tourist uh, opportunities. You have a company here that is uh, uh, willing to separate the village from uh, the, uh, the legal obligations. Um, it, it would be paid for by Dave's, Dave's group. Um, one of the final things that I would like to amplify, um, to, um, to be brief again, it is, it is, it is the fact that um, um, I, um, I've seen the contract that has been drafted with uh, the Rivers Foundation. Um, whatever the shortfall is, is going to come to the town. Uh, we can certainly um, discuss more um, the uh, concerns that might be found there, but if you consider this option, if you go with this option, that legal liability, that potential trap, if um, anything were to have to be done above the 800 feet that was being pr uh, promised, is going to be gone. So I would certainly thank you and ask you to um, consider this as an um, alternative option. Uh, we would be happy uh, uh, to brief uh, the legal aspects of it. Uh, we would be happy to dis discuss some of the, uh, the financial details that we cannot obviously do right now and um, don't want to beg the time to uh, do. And uh, with that, we thank you. and. Uh, would answer any any questions that you have. Thank you. Is there questions from council at this time? I would just go back to Mr. Fogel's question in regards to how many other companies are out there doing this, and what's their success rate, and what's their track. Well, um, I can address the first part. They can um, certainly handle um, the success rate. Um, this is um, a growing trend nationwide. Dave pointed out that um, energy companies have a specific mandate that by 2025, 25% of their energy has to be green. Okay, now 2025 sounds like it's a, it's a good ways off. For a corporation trying to shift its gears, as it were, from generally coal to something like this, um, that is going to be coming fast. So um, around the country, there, there are um, energy corporations that are jumping at opportunities like this. The power that would be generated uh, would be entirely green. Um, it, would, it, it, um, it would not be at, at all unreasonable to think that they would be jumping at, at, at this opportunity because it would help to um, fulfill the mandate. And do you want to discuss the uh, success rate uh, aspect? Well, as I said earlier, we're the first ones in North America, other than one in Oregon, which has not done anything yet. Uh, however, they have done over 30 of these in Europe, Poland, and mostly France, now Italy. Italy did buy out the French company, which is interesting, a company from Italy doing that. But they have about 30, and they have met and exceeded their expectations. Of course, these were thoroughly tested at De Laval University in Quebec City, Quebec. And they do work. And we get calls all the time now. Our website's up. People are contacting us saying, we have a dam. Can you do this? Can you do that? But right now, we will be the first in the United States to have the VLH turbine in the water. And the group in Oregon, I do not know what stage they're at. I do know they started about two years after we did. Unless they had a dam in their ownership portfolio at that time, they're still working on it. Uh, 
Anything else? How long have you been in existence? About three years. <clears throat> and that one in Indiana is what, off the White River, or is that a different project? Uh, White River is down in Indianapolis. This one is a hydraulic canal off of the Elkhart River. And it was built for industry in the city of Goshen. And I did mention the uh, hydraulic canal in the Elkhart County Park System. That was actually built for power production. They had three powerhouses on there to produce energy. Uh, anything else that we can uh, address at this time? Uh, well, thank you again for I, I, I just want to make a few comments uh, in regards to it. I, <clears throat> I think that a lot of the, and I'll call them opinions, because while I appreciate and respect your opinions in regarding the wildlife that is out there now, for as many people who can state it on one side, there are several who would state that the removal of the dam would be beneficial. So for that reason, I'll call them opinions. There are several opinions on both sides of these fence on whether it is better to remove the dam or leave it intact. And quite honestly, the viability of generating power from that dam, as you said, falls on you and not on us as a community. I think what we sit at right here, the crossroads that this council is at it doesn't really have to do with those opinions. It has to do with we are in a place where we are fairly far along within a commitment that was committed to several years ago. Uh, I believe that process began, when was the initial, Nine. when the water line was put in? Eight years ago? Ballpark? Seven, eight years ago? In 2000. Okay. Whether we like or agree with what has happened with a previous decision from a previous council, it's what we have to deal with now. So if we were to move forward with, if, if we, on the current track that we're on right now, if we decide to change direction of that and we have a financial burden come back to us because of that, because of money that has already been spent on this project, that's a major concern of mine. To change direction and cost money to the village is something that I don't think that I would be comfortable with. When I sit here in this chair, th there's a difference of opinions for myself. I don't get to use my personal opinion on what I would like to see with the dam because that can differ from what I feel is the right thing to do for the community. So for this option to go forward, I myself would have to see that it's the right thing for the community, starting with the financial mm -hmm. obligation of that. If I were voting completely with my personal opinion, that could be a different outcome. But I can't mix those two when I sit here. So I'm just giving you my feedback on what would be important for me to see from your group to even consider changing direction. We're three years into a project with a million dollar price tag that is to be completed, last we were told, what, August? So they're looking for sometime they're, this year? They're looking to start this October. Okay, yes, I'm sorry, to start. So we're kind of approaching that 11th hour within this project. So to stop the project at this point I would have to see some real evidence that it's not going to cost this community money for what has already been spent. And it, that might be better for a later discussion. You had mentioned coming back to a workshop meeting, um, some of those details and what the details are of your offer. Um, that's probably a lengthy conversation. Uh, well, and, and just one point. And uh, uh, we're sensitive to what, what, what you were saying. Um, the DNR and EPA are uh, ambivalent. Uh, um, they, if, if, if they felt strongly that it would do um, uh, environmental good 
for the dam to go, yeah. they would have um, pushed or been uh, behind this. And the, the fact that they have not, and so much time has passed, which is, is not typical uh, for this kind of, of, of process from an, um, an environmental point of view definitely shows that it's, yes, it is opinion, but if the other side had a better case, they would have um, EPA behind them. And um, at this point, and having spoken to those folks who um, I used to work with, uh, they're not. So, so financially, Dave can uh, address that, that might be better for us to maybe uh, present something, um, um, specific proposals for us to, to, to perhaps talk about. But nothing's been done yet. Correct. And uh, that's why we're here. Okay. Would you give your attorney permission to speak with Mr. Bamberger in regards to this? That would be a decision for counsel. I'm comfortable with that. I think we all discuss it first maybe with the council ourselves privately to so see how each be, one feels about doing that. That would fall under executive meeting yes. discussion. It would? Yeah. Should because be. it involves property that the village has. <coughs> Are you speaking spell. in far as an offer or just in general information? General information. General information is open. If they want more specifics, then that has to be talked about. Your ORF contract. I oh. believe that any public contract would be open for you to discuss, wouldn't it? I mean, that's. I'm yeah, refer I mean, I, to. I can discuss a contract. That's that's public knowledge. What the contract is. Right. Anything outside of that purview, though, would not be. It's, that's the reason I was saying we should have a meeting and have our attorney there for the council to see how, what, what we can say when, he d when someone does come. So we're covered. Um, yeah, um, you could certainly get back to, uh, um, to, um, to, um, to me, to, uh, to, to my office. I, um, I know your attorney. I met her a number of, of times on that court. Um, so um, we can certainly go forward without that. Okay. And thank you. One last question. You said it was seven million dollars, two thousand homes, roughly. How many turbines? A minimum of two. Oh, you two. may be able to do four. Your tail race appears to be lengthy enough. Okay. Well, thank you very much for making the uh, trip over here from Indiana and uh, taking the time to present to us tonight. Thank you, Mr. Bromberger, as well. Um, yes. Uh, thank you for, for your time, everybody. Thank, thank you. you. Yes. I'd like to ask you a question. First of all, I'd like to ask a question of the lawyer, Director. Is that damn? We give away right now. If you may, maybe. Yes. He has a question for you. People down there oh, on the river, and they got killed. Who's responsible? You're the law director. Could you repeat the question, please? Pardon me? She didn't hear the question. Could you repeat the question? Mike, must If that dam would explode right now, and there's people along that river maybe camping out or something like that, and they got killed, who would be responsible? I believe West Milton, right? Do you guys want me to answer that? It's <laughs> That's my question. <laughs> this is not a joke. I, no, I understand. It's not. But it, it's a bit of a loaded question for her. Um, no, it isn't a loaded yeah, question. Yes, to a point, to responsibility and lawsuits can be filed against anybody, that, if I may be corrected. Can't be filed against you? No, I That's said they can be can. filed against anyone. Whether or not the courts would deem us responsible for the death of what someone. About the state law? I'm not a judge, attorney, or court and can't See, answer such a question. Is it our damn yes? 
And what? could that be a potential liability? What? May I say oh, yes to yes. that? Yes. There's a previous council, and we had three people that was handpicked by our crooked city manager that we used to have. I, I do want to interrupt you. I don't appreciate previous councils and previous administration being slandered in an open meeting. If you have comments, you know it, isn't slander? it is slander to call someone crooked. So I, I appreciate your comments and I will well, please we let you go people. on. Thank you. We had three people in a mayor that said she wasn't going to spend no money. And we had three people that voted whatever the city manager wanted. And that made four. And that made it you know. Now, isn't there a state law that says that West Milton yeah. is responsible for that dam? To maintain that dam? Well, right now, West Milton owns the dam, so. Pardon me? West Milton owns the dam at this That's point. That's right. And we've owned that dam for years. Can I ask we a question? Water, we pumped water out of that dam, and we paid high water bills. There never was a penny of our taxpayers' money to maintain that dam. So it goes back over the period of years at council after council after council. And this man is trying to save you. The state of Ohio had done the number on you. Why, why in the world does that grant money went to the EPA and then from the EPA to the Cincinnati Sewer District? And now, I believe the manager will tell you that that money is at the Park District. Uh, why, why wouldn't that dam tore down when it was so dangerous that it had to be tore down? And so that money can travel around the trail. And how much money is left in that grant money that's already been can spent? I say something first? Yes. Uh, there's a lot of issues you brought up in there, and I would just like to comment on a few. One, hindsight's 2020. I mean, we can look all day at what previous councils have done, previous administrations have done. We can look at the federal government and say what they should have, should not have done to put us in different messes. There's nothing we can do about those. Only thing we can do is look at what we're given now and what we can do to move it forward. So saying that, we as a council have to look at, okay, there were a lot of things that should have been done over the last 50 years that were not done. We have to look at and prioritize what needs done. Now, if I have to go to somebody and say, I'm sorry, we're not going to fix a water main break or we're not going to fix a water tower that needs repaired because we're going to keep this dam going, when I have someone that's saying, I'm willing to take it out for you, I'm not in a position to feel comfortable to do that. Now, on the other side, if I have somebody that says, I'm going to buy the dam, I have a lot of concerns on that too because they don't want to know what happens when that company, if it goes under, like a lot of companies do. You're not responsible. No, if the company goes bankrupt, I want to know who's responsible for that at that point in time if it's that not happens. The village. It's not the village. It'll go to a bankruptcy court and It'll then the bankruptcy the court will have it. So those are my other concerns and aspects. So if I have to look at, okay, what's financially responsible since because you're bringing up, we have our funds to do certain things. That's what we're looking at. We're looking at an I and I problem. We're looking at sewer problems. We're looking at all sorts of problems. So let's not try and look at what they should have done. We need to look forward. Well, I think that's what we could do. Look forward, and this gentleman's trying to bail us out. And, and we and thank should, him. There should yeah. be no discussion on it. It should be a shut and dry deal. And I want to say one more thing. I would like to ask for the resignation of our vice mayor. Uh, he knows why. I don't want him telling the town how to spend my money, my taxpayer dollars, because he don't want to talk about. Are there any other comments from citizens tonight, either in general? Yeah, it seems like we're just all here. Can, can you just introduce yourself to everyone? Thank you. Yeah, it seems like we're just all here to do the best for the city. You know, and come up with a better solution for the van than taking it out. Uh, there seems like a lot of uh, 
possibilities, opening up for uh, green energy, possibly, you know, and, uh, and it's definitely a very good fishing place and boating and canoeing and, you know, and I think we could actually do a lot more. There was like a, a handicapped group that uh, wants to have access to the lake, you know, to sure. enjoy that, you know, and we could provide that for those people and, and veterans also that can't get out, you know, and we could have them in on two coats of canoes or whatever we had. But there's just so much there that it would just be um, a shame to get rid of all of it, you know. And, and, uh, we're all trying to come up with the best solution and um, we're not trying to be adversarial at all. And um, I'd like to see it continue for our grandchildren and children. And um, there's a lot of good stories and history kind of that to him. Providing power for the city and water for the city, and, and it could be uh, do so much more. I thank you. So that's all I'm saying. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. That's good. <laughs> yes. I just want to, David Snyder. I just want to clarify to this council. I'm not your adversary. I'm here to work with you. I'm here to make it happen and to help your town grow and be more beautiful. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Mr. Snyder. Thank you. <clears throat> Are there any other comments from citizens this evening on this topic or any others? Thank you very much. Thank you. And thank you for the conversation. Mm -hmm. I, we you. appreciate it. We appreciate it. it. Thank you. OK, moving on to the rest of the agenda. First item for ordinance or resolution is CM-14-07, resolution to authorize the purchase of a wood chipper. Ms. Brosh. A resolution authorizing the purchase of a brush chipper. Whereas the municipality's 2014 capital budget includes money for the purchase of a brush chipper, and whereas the informal bidding process has been in accordance with section 33.18A3 of the administrative code contained in the West Milton Code of Ordinances. Now therefore be it resolved by the Council of West Milton, Ohio, that section one, the municipal manager is hereby authorized and directed to execute a contract with Vandalia Rental of Vandalia, Ohio, in the amount of $24,000 seven hundred sixty seven dollars for a two thousand nine Vermeer brush chipper section two this resolution shall take effect and be in full force from and after its passage do I have a motion to accept this resolution one of them Sorry. <laughs> that's all right first and second yeah. Yeah. okay all right uh, is there any discussion on this Roll call, please. Francis? Yes. Willis? Yes. Tennerman? Yes. Vogel? Yes. Ashley? Yes. And Miller? Yes. Okay, our next resolution is CM-14-08, uh, resolution to authorize a manager to enter contract to resurface Market Street. It's a resolution authorizing the manager to execute a, con execute a contract for the stabilization and resurfacing of Market Street. Whereas the municipality's 2014 budget includes $150,000 for street resurfacing, and whereas the formal bidding process has been conducted in accordance with Section 33.18A of the Administrative Code contained in the West Milton Code of Ordinances. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the Council of West Milton, Ohio, that Section 1, the municipal manager is hereby authorized and directed to execute a contract with Ray Hensley Incorporated of Springfield, Ohio, in the amount of $37,037 for the removal and reclamation of Market Street. Section two, the municipal manager is hereby authorized and directed to execute a contract with Wagner Paving Incorporated of Laura, Ohio, in the amount of $40,550 for the resurfacing of Market Street. Section three, this resolution shall take effect and be in full force from and after its passage. I have a motion to accept this resolution. 
So moved. Second. It's a race tonight. Uh, is there any discussion on this? Um, it's the Market Street. The Market Street? Market Sorry. Street. Yeah. Um, uh, what was I going to say? We, we are in the pro uh, well, it would be our recommendation that um, that it would be passed for to this evening. It's an excellent price. If you'll recall, we budgeted around $150,000. Now, this totals out at about 70 some thousand in total. Um, there is some additional cost for some copper fittings that we'll be doing the work for the waterline part portion of the project and probably a few thousand dollars for surveying work to make sure that the street is put back into the grade that we want it to be done, but it's going to be well under the budgeted amount. I believe Ben wanted to speak tonight on this project as well, if that's okay. Mm -hmm. um, yes. Just comments before you vote. Um, I, I do have to say I, I have a little bit of a personal interest in this because I have promised about every resident on the street that I can't retire until this street is done. But it doesn't mean you can retire next year, Beth. <laughs> <laughs> That's definitely true. Um, however, we, we, haven't, we have tried to get grants for this project um, multiple times, I do know. Um, whether we, you know, how far the grant process made it due to the street, you know, I, I can't go back and say. But I will say that it is going to be done right. It's going to be done properly. And um, Hensley's, uh, Ray Hensley Incorporated did give us an excellent um, bid on the stabilization reclamation and the removal of the three and a half inches. The removal of the three and a half inches is to ensure that at the end of the project, after the top, uh, the topo survey has been done, it'll be staked. That street will have the same pavement um, depth that it has currently. Therefore, we won't create any additional drainage problems. Um, it's already was raised apparently decades ago when it was paved, and I wanted to ensure that it wasn't raised even an inch higher than it is now. Um, but lastly, I would like to mention Wagner paving. Uh, Wagner paving's done a lot of our paving over the last uh, decade and a half. I know I crunch these numbers and I usually triple check them. And I do, um, I do add in inflation, um, especially on um, the hydrocarbon products such as the uh, asphalt and fuels and that sort of thing. Um, there's a price that you would give a place that you really, that you want the job. Uh, there's a price that you give when you don't really want the job and you might get lucky. And then there's a price of a neighbor helping a neighbor. Um, Wagner Paving, Tom Wagner Sr., Steve Putterball, who used to be a West Milton resident, um, Brent Kress, who I graduated with in the class of 85, go class of 85, and um, also Bob <laughs> Spittler, who does um, the, all the inspecting work. I think they work together really well for us. Um, I can tell you that the $40,550, they're, their, they're paying their workers and making just a little bit, but I just want to thank them for working with us um, year after year. They, they've won a lot of the bids because simply they're an excellent company and they give us an excellent price. So publicly, I just wanted to say thank you to Wagner Paving. Thank you. Thanks. Yes. How soon will the project start and roughly how long will it take to finish? We are finishing our spring cleaning over the next week to week and a half. Um, we have a couple other what I would call priority type jobs to do in the meantime. Um, it all depends on the water line replacement. Um, I would like to have the water lines done. Um, I'm hoping by the end of May, um, without any promises, that's my goal, if Mother Nature cooperates to where we could actually uh, start the project in maybe mid to late June. Right now is what we're looking at. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? Roll call, please. Uh, Francis? Yes. Willis? Yes. Hennerman? Yes. Vogel? Yes. Ashley yes. and Miller. Yes. Okay, move on to CM-14-09, resolution to support state issue one, OPWC. It's a resolution supporting state issue one, renewal of the state capital improvements program on the May 6, 2014 ballot. Whereas Ohio local communities are in continuing need of support for vital road, bridge, sewer, water, and other infrastructure projects. And whereas Ohio is in, has in place a state program of support for local communities, which not only helps to fund infrastructure projects, but also creates large numbers of construction and allied jobs. 
And whereas the Ohio State Capital Improvement Program has successfully provided support for more than 11,500 such projects and resulting job creation since its inception in 1987. And whereas issue one on the May 6, 2014 statewide ballot will authorize the state of Ohio to issue up to $1.875 billion in capital improvement bonds to pay for or help local governments pay for the cost of public infrastructure. And whereas no new taxes are required to fund repayment of the bonds. Now therefore, the municipality of West Milton hereby resolves section one that the council for West Milton supports and endorses the passage of state issue one, renewal of the Ohio Public Works Commission program and that a copy of this resolution be addressed to strong Ohio communities. Section two, this resolution shall be in full force and effect from and after the earliest period allowed by law. Do I have a motion to accept this resolution? So moved. Second. Is there any uh, comments or discussion on this? My apologies to council. This, this literally came upon my desk on Thursday of last week, so I was able to prepare for Friday. I hope some of you might be familiar with the program. Um, I remember being a very young village administrator in 1988 for the village of Canal Fulton when the very first year that this was funded and it, it helped pay for a uh, new downtown for Canal Fulton. Um, been able to successfully utilize this program throughout the other communities that I've managed and uh, the affluent channel on the $100,000 zero percent interest loan is also part of this program and that's, that's the source of the funding. So um, I know that we got this from Brad, who's this uh, Brad Vath, the assistant city manager of, of TIP. He's also part of the Miami County uh, committee that um, reviews everything. He, I know that uh, PICWA is passing their uh, resolution next week. I know uh, TIP would be doing the same probably um, Monday. I think they meet on Mondays, and I know Troy will pass it as well. They're encouraging all the communities in within Miami County to please consider passage. Thank you. Comments? Roll call, please. Francis? Yes. Willis? Yes. Tennerman? Yes. Vogel? Yes. Ashley? Yes. And Miller? Yes. Okay, we'll move on to municipal manager's report. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Only a couple items tonight. Just to give you a quick little update, I know I do it every week, but um, as of tonight or as of this afternoon, we were approaching the 200 meter mark um, of replacements of the new meters. That's approximately 10%. We're pro approaching the 10% level of new meters. Um, mostly right now, they've been just in the pits. Um, they don't want to. They don't like tracking any mud in any private homes. So we really need some dry weather so we can start doing meters inside homes. Um, book one. Book one is practically done. I think there's maybe 10 meters on book one that need to be finished. I know they're working on books two, three, and seven as well. Um, postcards for the next set of books should be going out um, if they haven't already. And I would just encourage all listeners tonight that um, as soon as you get your postcard, um, please uh, contact the number. Uh, there will be somebody on the line or you can leave a name and um, Please get on the uh, the registration to uh, replace your meter, but it's going quite well. Can I ask you a quick question sure. on that? Uh, this question was asking me today: If their meter is in a pit, do they still need to call to set an appointment, or will it just be replaced automatically? The the short answer is it's going to be replaced, um, but we still reach out to everybody. Um, we knock on doors for pits, but it would be nice if even pit customers would call us just so we know that they know it's being replaced that day. Okay. Um, we don't want to catch anybody in the shower or something, and we're outside, you know, so we always <clears> knock <throat> on the doors to make sure that, you know, that they're home, or if, no, if there's no one home, that we can then do it. But, okay. yeah, it would still be nice just to call, just to get it scheduled. Okay. Uh, we've already talked about the Market Street. Um, old school park plan, the park board has changed their uh, monthly meeting uh, for this month. Uh, there were some conflicts on that uh, for next Tuesday. So the uh, Park Board will be meeting on Wednesday, April 16th, starting at 630. Uh, they'll be going over final concepts with the Jackson Design Firm. 
make any further adjustments. And I know it's the uh, Park Board's intentions to be here at the next Council meeting to uh, present it to Council, a master plan to Council and also the public. Um, speaking of parks, um, Ben and his men will be, um, well, the Park Board, I know we've announced this last year, the Park Board has made a decision to change the two tennis courts on the northern end which the two tennis courts which are closest to the stadium into basketball courts um, and uh, the boards and the hoops have already been ordered they're here um, Ben and his men will be installing those hoops uh, soon and um, one of the things we also met with the school this week um, it, it, if you're familiar with that and you drive by on J Street you have a you have that five foot chain link fence that's right next to the sidewalk and then you've got inside the tennis courts you are outside the tennis courts around it you've got that I don't know, 10 12 foot fence and it sort of gave us a uh, claustrophobic feeling and um, the school has agreed and we're looking at tearing out much of not all but much of the fence along the sidewalk opening that up a little bit to give you just a nicer, better visual feeling of making it cleaner. So uh, once, the t once, that's in, uh, once the basketball hoops are installed, I assume we'll be doing the fence pretty much the same time, trying to clean up that whole area there. And I think it will make a real impact to that neighborhood. And um, then we are also um, received uh, companies that the school have used in the past uh, to paint because I mean, even though the hoops are up, it's still gonna be painted as a tennis court. So we're going to be getting some prices and taking that back to the park board um, for approval um, because we'd like to paint uh, basketball courts on there, obviously, since it's going to become basketball courts. Um, we actually have the idea of the center of the courts having our city emblem. I think it would look really cool. So we'll get a price from them and take it to the park board. Um, Matt? Yes. When you talked to them, did you ask them at all about the sand volleyball court? Are we able to uh, work on that to refurbish that in that area, or is there well, will actually, that disturb anything with the, that what they said area? Is actually going to be fenced in still to keep people out of the stadium oh, area. Oh, okay. So, um, and they've actually already ch they've they sawed the poles. There's no poles there. Uh, at the park board meeting, I think a couple people thought the poles were still there, they're so it'd just be put. They're all gone. Um, we, in fact, we were there yesterday, and I, I looked over there, and it's okay. It would be a little. We probably would have to install gates or something, and I'm just not sure the school is open to that idea of that access. Gotcha. Because okay. it's then it would make it easy access to the uh, stadium without pain. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And then finally, um, it's that time of year. Well, yeah, that time of year. About every couple of years. <laughs> Our uh, street lighting contract it comes up. Uh, ours will be finished the 1st of June. And um, uh, had a brief meeting with uh, Bob Stallman from DPNL or Miami Valley Lighting. And um, uh, he would like to be part of the uh, workshop agenda. So that's one of the things that will be on the workshop agenda for uh, this month. And that's all I have. Thank you. <laughs> Is there any old business to discuss this evening? New business. Comments from citizens? Oh, I'm sorry. I do have one other piece of business. That's fine. I'm sorry. But I look. Um, Tom Beck asked me. He thought it would be important. And I have to apologize. I, I, I never met this lady, but when I read her obituary, she sounded like quite an influential person and I'm sure many of you may have heard of her. Um, Arlene Ott was her maiden name, Arlene Clifton. Um, formerly of West Milton, she passed away on actually March 18th of this year. Um, she had a 40 year career in the newspaper business, including the Troy Daily News and the West Milton Record, amongst others. Uh, she also wrote a popular column called Reflections, which was about people, places, and things. Uh, Mrs. Clifton founded the Union Township Historical Museum and also the Quaker Research Center back in 1990. 
She was the principal founder of the Union Township Heritage Association in 1978. During America's Bicentennial in 1976, Arlene was appointed general chairman of the Western, West Milton Union Township American Revolution Bicentennial Committee. It was at this time she researched and oversaw the construction of a replica of what is considered Union Township's first church, an 1804 Quaker Log Meeting House, which is located in the West Branch Burial Grounds. She subsequently succeeded in getting the Log Meeting House declared as an Ohio historical site. Mrs. Clifton served as a member of the West Milton Community Improvement Corporation, CIC, for 13 years. She also was a member of the West Milton Planning Board for six years, the West Milton Park Board for four years, Secretary of the Milton Union Parent Teachers Association. She was also a member of the West Milton Historic Records Commission and past secretary of the West Milton Chamber of Commerce. She also served on the Friends of the West Milton Public Library Board when the present library was built in 1979. Um, she was buried uh, on March 22nd at the Riverside Cemetery in West Milton. Um, unfortunately, I did not know her. I'm sure many of you may have known her or heard of her. She sounded like she was a very influential person and I thought and I agreed with Tom that we would uh, recognize her tonight. So thank you, Tom. Thank you for reading that and recognizing. Just make sure I didn't cut anybody off. Are there any comments from citizens tonight? Nope. Is there a motion to adjourn? Ben oh, Ben. I apologize. I meant to write this down earlier today, and my phone rang, and I forgot. Uh, Miami Street, Hay Street, East Tip Pike, traffic lights. Mm -hmm. If anybody's noticed, there's been delays over the last, I would say, going back about two months. Um, in short, the lights had three problems. We found two of them, and we could yeah. not find the third one because it happened to be a loop. Um, underground that was making connection 99% of the time. And uh, every time they would come to check the system out, it was fine. So it was getting very aggravating for me and obviously aggravating for the people, especially overnight, that were sitting there stuck at the loops. Um, however, yesterday morning at 7.30, I opened the box and it was like one of them aha moments. The, the loop malfunction light from the proper loop was flashing. So now we have isolated the biggest problem of the lights that they've had in the last two months. By the end of this week, probably Friday morning, they will be here to replace that loop. I just wanted it, everybody to know so they, they understood we are aware of it. It is going to be fixed. Thank you. Thank you. Is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Adjourned. Very good.